Hey there, Brewberries. What's up? And welcome on back to the World Tour series of Season 1 of Brew and Build. I hope you guys are enjoying these shorter form world tours. I think they're going to be good. I think they just will make it easier to watch. Um, today we are going to be exploring a few different places because they're all interconnected up and I think it's better to group them because uh, if we don't then we'll have like a million videos to view. But today we are here, this is exactly where you would be coming out if the nether tunnels actually worked and stuff, but because they don't, I have to show you this perspective. So this is where you would come out of the portal for the gypsy camp. And the gypsy camp, I will say, uh, the name doesn't necessarily uh, mean what the actual me term gypsy means nowadays. And like, it's not not the slang form, not the like derogatory form. It's purely just the based off of the Fable 2 gypsy camp. So that's why it's called the gypsy camp. It's purely based on Fable 2. It's really just like a traveler's camp. And that's kind of uh, what we've established. And so that's why they've got all these kind of traveling caravan styles. And I think overall, it was a really fun. This is probably one of my favorite nostalgic type of builds because it feels a good amount like the gypsy camp at in Fable 2. And so I, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out this place. I think it looks really cool. It's really magical with like the nether wart all over the place. I think it looks really, really nice. But this area is filled to the brim with all sorts of little, little tiny builds and stuff because all of the caravans and stuff are pretty much themed around something. Uh, so a lot of times they may be just kind of like houses like this one's just mainly a house, but a lot of times they are doing something else. Like this may be a house on top, but it's a sort of like the main clothing area. So this is kind of like the dryers or whatever. Um, and so they are doing the washing and drying of the town clothes and banners and all sorts of stuff. And that's why we've got the kind of a clothesline here. We've got these hot water areas for washing. We've got a drying rack in here. It's just a really fun little area, a little fun build. I really love these, this type of doing this type of like village where everything's like all small and kept together. I think it looks really nice. But the main draw, honestly, of this place was this lake. So this lake was uh, naturally formed. This is where really what drew me to this area because I saw this lake and was like, I think we could build a town all around this. The update aquatic was coming around and I didn't want to do like an underwater build, but I wanted to do something that could be water centric. And I think this has worked really, really well. And so if we fly up here, you can see that we did incorporate a bunch of corals, a bunch of fish and stuff. And so the whole goal of it was to just make it feel super cool and aquatic and i think it looks really really nice especially when you get underwater and in shaders it's real bright but it is a very fun little build i really love how it looks but the whole lore around this area is it is a traveler's camp type of thing and uh, the whole goal of it was to kind of establish this hierarchy so where you've got all these like travelers and stuff and and so the main purpose of this area is like this is kind of a traveler's camp that has been set up um, and these people that have the caravans that are kind of stationed with t shops and stuff, they're a little bit more permanent residents, but it's supposed to be allowing for people to come and go as they please, set up their, their campsites however they want. And they're all governed by this caravan here. This is the leader's caravan. And this was an interesting build because it was kind of like, how do I make a sort of palacey feeling? The goal was like to make a caravan palace. And I was like, that's like an oxymoron that I wasn't sure how to accomplish. But I think we did a pretty decent job. It's a big caravan. It acts as a watchtower and it acts as like the leader's main home. And I think it's really cool. We built this custom cliff for it to sit on because there was not enough space at all for it to fit on. And I think I'm really I'm really pleased with it. This area is definitely feels like the most interesting to walk around for sure. But when you walk around, you just you're covered in leaves and, and foliage and all sorts of stuff. And you come across things like this place. This is selling fish and chips. The bottom area is just the cooking area. And then the cool thing is the up up top area is where all of the living situation goes on. I think it looks very cool. It's just like a, a small little area. You do get these fun little balcony views on all of these because of just the fact that they're all up above. I think it looks really nice. The campfire does add a lot now. We had an original fire there, but then we just slapped a campfire on top. I think it looks really nice. And for any of you who are wondering why are some of the, why are there some birch trees going on that are in dark oak in the dark oak forest? We I was originally going to be calling this the Silverwood Camp. Um, or the Silverwood Gypsy Camp or whatever. And uh, so we were going to be swapping out all of the Dark Oak for 
birch. And so it was going to become the Silverwood camp. I was going to throw in some acacia and stuff as well. And uh, then I realized how big of a task that was going to be. Uh, and uh, as I started swapping it out, the more I realized I actually really like the dark oak aesthetic. I think it looks really nice. So we kept some trees that are the birch. Um, and I, I did some transitioning and stuff, but not nearly as much as I was initially in planning to. We go down here there's just a whole bunch of the thing i think the reason why this feels so interesting is the exteriors are all just there's so many little areas to be like there's this little campsite here there's a little campsite over there there's this bridge oh there's an opening with all sorts of stuff going on we'll explore that in a second but we got to look over here because this is like the tent district uh, so I wanted to figure out, well, we don't need to have wagons because in every area because, one, the trees are so gosh darn low in some of these areas. And so I wanted to figure out how can we do this sort of like traveler's feel without having to do caravans. And so the idea was, let's make these tents. I think they turned out really, really nice. They were really fun to put together. They're really quick. You don't have to have a ton of wool, don't have to have a ton of wood or anything. It's just really, really quick. Mr. Porkers, are you here? There you are. Piggles. Sorry, you're not Porkers. Porkers is the one I took to Vastin. But we got one that's a, a shop here. Hey, the, if you don't have any idea as to what to put in a shop, just say you're out of stock and that something's coming soon. I think that looks really nice. I really like doing like this is a, a little bit bigger tent. But the f reason for it is because it is both a shop and a living area. We will explore down that direction. That is the pathway that leads to Orchard Vale. Um, we will be exploring that at some point. Oh, also the uh, coordinates I will put up again. I'm going to try and flash them a couple times throughout the episode just for any of you who uh, may miss it. Um, I'll also try and put timestamps down just so that you get to see and make sure that you have them. I'll also put the coordinates down in the description. I'm just going to try and set it up so that you guys are if you're downloading the world via Discord, if you haven't checked that out, join my Discord. You can download this world, and it is a 117 world, so just you should just be able to load it up. Uh, there's nothing that's really added in 117, so I figured might as well just do it in 117. Now, this area actually has some stuff that y'all may not have seen because uh, when I was working on the textures for the bamboo and the flower pot, I was trying out this new... I wanted to do this, like hanging little style thing because I, I kind of figured out that bamboo reaches up to the top of the to the bottom of the block above it and so I thought well it'd be really cool this could be like a little hanging thing like in uh Kakariko Village or something uh, in Zelda Breath of the Wild where they have like those hanging pieces of wood I thought that was a really interesting idea so I I decided you know what let's just figure it out and so uh, I made this individual texture just so you could do this hanging thing I think it looks really nice especially once you hang them all around and I'm really, yeah, I'm just really pleased with it. I think it looks really cool. This is the leader's tent. This is where the whole whole concept around the leader is that she is a sort of fortune teller type of person, a very mystical type person. Um, and so she has this little ball here, her little uh, fortune telling ball. And then you can kind of sit here and she can tell your fortune. And uh, that's kind of the whole whole concept around her leadership is she's very like mystical and knowledgeable about that type of stuff. And so able to kind of tell the tell the future a little bit or be able to give you your fortune and all that and then this is uh honestly this is probably some of the best cliffside i think i've ever really done it just feels so natural and feels so it's really overgrown of course but it just feels really natural with how the stairs and the stone and the dirt and stuff all blends together with the bushes and stuff i just think it looks really really good and we definitely need to do some of this in season two because Definitely could use a little bit more on the terraforming. Maybe we've got so many more blocks and cobblestone now, too. I bet we could make it look really, really good. Little dock area down here. Just some dock and storage area. Nothing too crazy. Just wanted to have some place for them to, like, do some trading and stuff via the river. So then if you come up here, you are going to get... This is how you get up to the leader's area here, the leader caravan. And uh, it's a it's a big one. It's a big boy. And um, it was interesting to try and design it because it was like, how do I make a caravan that is big and leader feeling but isn't too big and doesn't like stick out because I didn't want to make like a, a solid structure that was like can't be moved. Uh, so this one ha is sitting on giant wheels and stuff. It's a little bit more permanent feeling, but it can push come to shove be moved. 
So if you do the interior here, it is actually fully done. We got a little bit of a kitchen area here, a little bit of storage around here and a spiral, spiral staircase on up here. This is supposed to be kind of like the barrack section where the guards and stuff or the people that would protect the leader would be. Uh, and so we've got little patios on the top here and uh, I think it looks really nice. It's really cool because you can really convey like see the kingdom almost see the the camp and so you can look over there you can look kind of down there and it looks really cool and then if we go on up here got a little sitting area here and this is where the leader would be so maybe a little reading area or something and then a little bit of a sleeping area with a little Ooh, isn't that nice and then if we go on up here this is also supposed to function as a watchtower and i think it looks really nice because i love the 360 view you get here you can see the whole area, you can see our town over there that is Sarthal right there. Um, and then you can kind of just view everywhere. So you get a really great perspective. It really gives like if nobody would be able to sneak up on this area, I think. Um, and so you just get a really good perspective of this whole entire area. I think it looks really, really cool. And I really love being on top of here. I think it looks like such a cool build. And lastly, wrapping around this side here, we've got a little bit of a station here. So there's a, a this tent over here is supposed to be for the leader as well. So she has two areas in the town that she can be either fortune telling or she can just be over here chilling with her peeps. And it's supposed to be just like a little bit of a nook area for her to be. Um, and then there's a, a little bit of a flower shop here. This one's kind of interesting because it's got a bridge that connects them. So it's like one person owns this whole shop area. So it's like the bottom area is selling, it shows flowers for sale. And then the top area also has flowers for sale. And I think it looks really cool. And then you can come across here and this is where they would actually be living. And then we're going to go now to the, so that's the gypsy camp. We're going to go now to the town of Sarthal, which is our farming town. And to get there from the gypsy camp, you just follow, you can follow this road. This is not complete, but I originally was going to do it uh, this way to where it connects up here. You come up here and there's this coarse dirt section right here. And it is just right this away. And uh, I'm going to go get into a de better perspective so you can kind of see the end, the end vision of where I wanted. I was going to carve this whole pathway out and make it kind of like cliffs on either side so you really get a condensed view of Sarthal. And so let's just uh, go see the perspective I was hoping to show. So this is the view that I was hoping you would come out of the, the pathway with. And uh, the path kind of comes that way. And so I, I was hoping that you would be able to come here and you'd just be greeted with the castle and the top of the temple sticking up here. This is our town of Sarthal. This is probably my favorite in terms of completeness and lore and stuff. This is really where we got into a lot of lore in our world. And I think it looks it's a really cool town. I, it's got my one of my favorite builds. Uh, this is probably my my favorite or my second favorite build the temple is. Um, and so we're going to be looking at that more in depth. But to give a brief overview, this is the farming town, as you can see by the giant farm fields. So we've got a giant wheat field. We've got a potato field. We got a pumpkin field. And then this is a rotation field. So the whole lore behind this was like the people came to this town, to this land, because the land was super fertile. Uh, and so that's why it is a farming town, because the king came here and settled because he saw that the land was really, really good for growing crops. And so he he came here. King Ran the first came here and founded the town and then built a temple to Os, which is the god of the, the humans in this world. And then uh, so then they have this really, really fertile soil. And so we've got like this, the main fields here. And then the rotation field is supposed to just show like there's all sorts of stuff growing in there. This is like not planted or anything like they just kind of naturally grows because the soil is just so dang fertile. And so that's kind of the whole purpose behind this field. And this was really, truly the uh, like, you know, you kind of go through like you, you just got to do a farming town. And uh, this was my my stake in getting into the farming town. And I actually love the path texture here. This is where I tested out if I liked the path texture. And I got to say this this path texture grows on me so much. Every single time I see it in this town, I just think it looks so dang good. So we got just all sorts of cool, interesting farms. I I love making like if I could just make giant farms, I would. 
um it was just super cool i absolutely loved it but this is the build style of the area um this is not the first build that we did but originally it was a little bit darker toned because the andesite texture was actually pretty dark um but now it is more aligned to what vanilla looks like it still goes really well with a bunch of grays and stuff so still feels feels very nice uh, this is where we used to store all sorts of potatoes and stuff um, down here is actually where the lore kind of began and so we've got the purple potato and then this is supposed to be the we were calling it the taint at the time um that name is now uh, we'll just call it uh the void growth or something like that but the whole purpose is like this uh, town explains the reason the end is existing and why endermen are in the world um, because the temple is built over the end portal um, and so there used to be a lore book here. I don't know where it went. I think that we had the bug potentially of some entities and item frames getting destroyed. Um, so if you are interested in learning more about the lore, I'll try and link to the, there's a playlist with lore, I believe. If not, I'll make it. Um, and so I'll put that link down below. Um, but look at this. Isn't this crazy? I love it. So this is a, a like a shattered savanna Kind of plateau in the middle of this regular savanna and it's just this one it's there's like not hardly any other part of it this and i loaded up the seed uh in other versions and for some reason our particular seed at the time we made it just made this particular plateau it does not exist in any other and so it's kind of crazy that it actually is here i think it looks really cool i absolutely love it so we're going to explore down this way in just a bit, um, but this is another, this is the beetroot area. We've got a crop field for every single one. I, I love, love, love doing this kind of like two patches and then a path and then two patches and then like just an empty row. It makes it feel so much more like actual crop rows. I think it looks really nice. This is actually a really pretty decent build that uh, went over pretty well in terms of viewership. Uh, the windmill here. Uh, very interesting build, very, very odd to try and do, very difficult to do as well in terms of trying to get it to feel correct. I wanted it to feel like a dilapidated old windmill that was not uh, your standard like white white wool windmill. And so I think we did pretty decent on this one. I actually really, really like it. There's a chicken up there as well that's up up inside the top of there. And his name is like uh, Alfred or something like that. And uh, he's been there since we built it, so... Want to go see a chicken that's the place to do it and then of course we got the carrot field this area has been actually rebuilt a couple times uh the wall particularly has been because we've had some chunk error issues here and i've had to go back through and like rebuild it which has been kind of a pain in the tuchus but you know it's it, it is what it is but it's kind of been a pain in the butthole but the windmill is a really cool build and all but uh i think let's get into my favorite section of the town which is the town square area i think it looks so cool especially the goal of making the temple so big was that you just cannot get away from it you are always in its shadow and i think it looks i think it, it is probably one of my favorite builds i think it just looks so dang good i love it this is the very first starter house that we made here. This is uh, what established the style. Nothing too particularly crazy, no revolutionary ideas or anything, but the goal of it was to show like this is partially abandoned. So this is a, an abandoned one. There's some that aren't abandoned, um, but the goal was to show like this has some abandoned qualities to it with the cobwebs and the overgrown. And so any house that has cobwebs and, is, and has leaves all over it is an abandoned house as opposed to some that do not. Um, and I thought it was just really interesting to kind of go about doing it. There's some lore here. They started putting water trenches and covering up the windows. Um, and this is to prevent Endermen from getting into their houses uh, because they didn't really realize they could uh, teleport. So this is just like a means for them to block their ability to get into the house via water trenches. I thought it was a really cool concept. So pretty much every house has that water trench in front just to add a little bit of lore and flair to everything. Got a little bit of a well here and then we have just some different market stalls and stuff. I think it looks very cool. I actually really, this is like a very just like quaint little market square and I really like it. Now let's get into the uh, the big build here because I think it looks really cool. So you come on up here and you walk on through, close the door because we're not heathens. And then you're greeted with this. So this is kind of the foyer area. Nothing too particularly crazy here. But 
you see here, that is the statue that is dedicated to Os, uh, the human god, and that is what this whole temple is all about. This build actually looks pretty different compared to what we originally, the the, build, the walls used to be kind of like a cobblestone-y texture uh, back when we had a changed andesite texture. Um, now it is much more vanilla, but with the texture variation, I think it actually doesn't look too shabby. But there is a gaping hole down there. All sorts of monsters. Thank goodness we're in creative. We're going to fly over this just for a second uh, because I want to point out that this build was made when we had reached 500 subs. Now look at us. We are 10 times more subs. That's insane. Who knew that we would get there? I just got to say thank you so much to you all because... If this doesn't show hard work pays off, I don't know what does, because I think this is a, a really, it, it's really cool to be able to go back and be like, oh, wow, we are literally 10 times further along than we used to be when we built this. So the idea is here, the whole lore concept is that the, the king came down, King Rayan the third came down and he uh, was going a little bit insane because some voices were driving him insane to like dr dig down into the temple. And so we have kind of like this uh, fallen in section. So this is supposed to be like the temple's been abandoned a bit. Uh, and so the floor has fallen in here due to all the stuff that's going on down there, which we'll get into. Um, but the king actually came in. He didn't dig that hole. That was uh, just, you know, because it's abandoned and not taken care of and there's some crazy stuff going on. Little dark area, ooh. Um, but this is how you actually get in to the catacombs, the natural way. I can't believe you do that door. So this is the catacombs and uh, some of the textures are a little different. Uh, these used to be gray beds that actually matched this. So they looked a little bit more like uh, tombstones. I actually don't really mind the uh, overgrown green beds. I think they actually kind of match a little bit, um, but this is the, the catacombs. We spent a long time down here doing some texturing. It is very dark, as you can see. Uh, I did not want to light it up too much because it just, I mean, that just wouldn't feel correct. Um, and so this is where, this is where King Rayan the second or first, I can't remember which one we said, this is where he's buried. We used to have a cool golden block texture that uh, was a connected texture, but I love how this feels. It's just so overgrown, so not taken care of due to everything that's going on. And uh, the whole purpose of it was to kind of match Skyrim's like Nordic uh, sort of burial chambers uh, the for the Draugr. Um, and so we've got some like embalming tools right there, some embalming stations. Got an area for if you don't want to be buried or anything, and you just want to be, you know, incinerated by the fire. Um, and I think overall it's just is a really, really cool build. Speak of Enderman, let's go down to... The whole purpose of this, so this whole glass stuff is supposed to be like void corruption. The wool texture used to be just straight black, did not have any texture to it. And so it looked like everything was just like disappearing into the void. Still kind of does, um, but it was way more effective when we actually, we should have used concrete, but that would have been a pain in the tuchus to get. We had a lot of wool at the time, so that's why we went ahead and did that. Um, but if you go down here, this is like the sort of a, a natural tunnel that I, I dug down to just make it feel like uh, somebody was like going crazy and like digging in all sorts of locations trying to find the voices. And this is like King Rain the Third's pathway of like, how do I'm hearing voices? How do I find it? And so he eventually found this area and just dug straight down. And that is where the end portal was. And that is what he initially, like he uncovered it, touched it, he disappeared and the connection was made and the that's how the Enderman came pouring out and invaded the world pretty much. And it's kind of a strange, we never explained any more than that, but that's like explains the connection of why the end portals here and why Endermen are in our world. So that is the temple, probably one of my favorite builds. If it's not my favorite, it's my second favorite build in our entire world. Um, we, I think we built that and then we decided, I, I decided that I really wanted to expand this town even further uh, and make it feel even bigger because it didn't make sense to me to just leave it down here. There wasn't much horizontal expansion either because it's not a very big biome. And so we made these giant platforms that were supposed to be just like the different districts. So this is kind of like the more rich person's district. They've got two story houses, bigger builds and stuff. We've got a King's Plateau area we'll get into in a sec. And then this is kind of like a market plateau where there's more shops and stalls and stuff. And it's essentially was just 
We built these because we needed a way, I wanted the castle to be on top of this cliff area and we needed a way to be able to get up there naturally and it to, to really flow well together. And I think that it, it works really, really well. We've got these little platforms. There's like no doors anywhere due to uh, zombies. So uh, bear in mind, it's pretty dangerous here because there's like no light. So these are like the upper class houses and uh, they're just two stories, a little bit bigger than the other ones, not too crazy. And then we get on up here and this is the the t area where all the shops and stuff are so we've got an inn right here a blacksmith over here and this is where i think uh, the glass textures actually came into play and we i started experimenting a lot with stained glass and so that's why some of the builds have some crazy stained glass going on and there's different like blocks and panes and stuff going on it just makes it a far more interesting so interiors here are actually pretty much done there are beds upstairs nothing too crazy just a little bit of an in area and i think it looks it looks really cool the blacksmith is actually kind of fun as well it's like built in, into this little area here built into the cliffside of where the blacksmith like area is and then we've got this build which is probably the most interesting build here uh it is like the witch's brew area and so this is like a witch that sells like potions and things but then also is uh, studying a little bit of the sort of void corruption that's going on. So the interior here is actually really interesting because we've got all sorts of brewing stands. We've got a conduit kind of just floating there. And then we've got, this is where I learned you can put pickles and stuff on top of cauldrons and uh, sea pickles. And it kind of looks like uh, they're poking out of the water. I thought that was cool. This is where she is currently studying the effects of what the taint stuff does. Uh, and so that's where it's like this thing is now growing and it's like everything's becoming more and more like the uh, end. And so I thought that was really interesting. And there is an interior up top, but we don't need to see it because it's not particularly interesting. And uh, then we've got a flower shop and we've got, I believe this is just like a ceramics shop or something, just like really simple clay type shop. We have a little bit of a sort of fortune telling area here as well with the gypsy camp bringing in a little bit of a caravan design, a little, a little more interesting glass front, kind of cool. And then we've got the pathway that leads on up. It's kind of a weird pathway with this sort of fencing structure. I thought it was kind of odd um, and doesn't really fit that well, but I thought it was kind of cool. But you got stairs all the way up and look at this view. Look at this. This is, if I was a king, I would definitely want to be able to survey my land like this. I mean, look at this. You can see all the fields. You can see just everything, and it looks so cool. We're even not even tall enough to be able to view all of the temple's top area, but I think it looks so cool. This is like, this is why I wanted to build on top of this area, because I knew the view would be stunning. So if we go inside here... We've got the throne room right here, smack dab. You got a little pathway that leads on up to it. So this is where the king would sit. We've got some sitting area here, not anything too particularly crazy. And then a little patio area here, not really much anything there. And uh, if we go, there's a couple ways you can go about it. So we're going to go up this way first. So if you go back here, this is supposed to be kind of like where the king would go to get to his quarters. So you come here and there's like a stairwell that goes on up here and then a spiral staircase that leads on, on up to the top. It is quite the tall tower to where the king would be sleeping. So this is kind of the king's quarters. He's got like a Juliet deck in every single little location and uh, it looks very cool. So he can even survey his kingdom up here. And if we go on back down to the throne room and we wrap around here, we've got a map that shows this whole area. I think this is probably one of my favorite maps in the world because you can just really tell where all of the farmland is. And I think it looks really, really cool. Kind of wish we did this striping with the uh, wheat, but I don't think that would make as much sense with the wheat. Um, so the whole wheat field is just a giant green blob, but that's okay. If we go down this way, this is leads to the castle kitchen, and this is where all of the uh, kitchen stuff is. Bunch of storage, cooking stuff. We've got a working freezer. I think that's kind of cool. And then if we go further on down, this is where the barracks are. So we got some bunk beds for the castle guards and all that. Looks in really good. The colors of the kingdom are like light blue and orange, so that's why the beds are that color. And then if we go down, there's a jail over there. Not really anything crazy there. Uh, the King's Plateau is right here, and I think it looks very cool. This is where I would spend my time. So the King can just kind of chill 
out here, enjoy the nice weather, view the surrounding desert land, and then also he can address his people via this area. So he can kind of look down onto the market area and just address his people and say, we are increasing the taxes 20%. And no, he was a nice king. Well, King Rain the Third was kind of a, a derp because he got like insane, but you know, it's okay. But there's views on all sides, can view everything. He could even address people over here if he wanted, but probably not. But that is the town of Sarthal, our farming town. And uh, I think it's probably one of our more successful uh, towns that we built in season one. I think it looks really, really cool. There's still some features and stuff I didn't cover here. So definitely, if you want to download the world, access it in my Discord to be able to view it because there's definitely all sorts of stuff here that is just little hidden goodies and stuff. Um, I'll try and leave links and stuff to any relative videos for this area as well, since it's such a lore driven area. But I think this is probably one of my favorite towns that we've ever made just because of how complete it is. Probably one of the most complete builds we've ever really done in terms of town. And just for any of you wondering, so that is the town of Sarthal right there. Here is the gypsy camp, quite literally right next to each other. And you can still see, like if your render distance is enough, you can see the whole town of Sarthal there as well. Um, the reason we're back here is because the last area we're going to explore today is actually going to deal with this walkway area to Orchard Vale. I figured these areas were all clumped together. Um, there's, as I said before, so this is like the tent district area. Piggles is in here. And uh, this is the path design that actually has gone it seems to go really well like you guys seem to really really enjoy the path design uh how to do it like a really immersive pathway that was kind of the goal of this and so i'm just going to start walking um i think this is a really cool build because it's not anything crazy there's mainly just leaves um but the whole purpose of it was to show like you can make such an interesting pathway just by making it weave and dodge duck dip dive and dodge if you want to quote dodgeball i just think this area is so interesting because we added little landmarks and stuff to like show like there's some camps and stuff and the whole goal of it was to make it so your view is blocked constantly and you don't know what's around the corner and that's like the whole purpose of it, it was like we've got this wall of leaves to make the pathway one pretty cl pretty clear of mobs because they don't spawn on the leaves and they won't really spawn on the path or the slab so you're pretty much safe got a little tent here that's uh, kind of bundled up there little pond area it's just filled with little landmarks to make it feel a little bit more interesting some rocks and some really grassy areas cliff sides and stuff and it's just I don't know it's such a cool immersive pathway and then you can kind of maybe go down here and realize it's a dead end so you got to go back up here and the whole purpose of it actually was uh at the time i was getting tired of using elytra flying around and not really exploring the land much and so we made this whole this is when the colas gate system was put into place uh, and that is our teleportation system that is in the game uh in our world i should say got a little bed area here um, and that was to help us get around quicker, um, but I wanted to make it a, an immersive experience to feel a little bit more interesting. So for any of you who don't know, Cola Skates are from Fable 2. A lot of my builds are generally inspired by Fable 2 because it's my favorite, favorite game of really all time. Um, and so the whole purpose of this was like, I want to do the Cola Skate system. Also, this, this used to be, this is the Petrified Oak texture in my texture pack and, uh, this used to be an oak texture, so it looked actually pretty cool because it was like actual like slabs for roots and stuff. Um, but now it kind of looks derpy. But I was getting tired of using Elytra, and so I made the Cola Skate system, um, which to be able to teleport around to all our different builds and stuff. Um, and the the rule we put in place was you cannot have a Cola Skate within 200 blocks of. It's like a 200 by 200 area of the town that you're exploring. So you got some cool builds over there, some custom trees and stuff. Um, and so you, I had to make a pathway that led from the Colas Gate to the town. And so that's why the Gypsy Camp was the area because we put a, well, this is a cool little ab abandoned area. Um, we put the Colas Gate over here in the swamp area um, and then made this pathway that led all the way over to it. Uh, and so we've got a, a, an unfinished cave section here 
And uh, there's this uh, old little loading section. Back when the wool was a void block, I decided to do like a derpy, like, you know, you would travel to an area in an older game where they had like load screens and stuff. And that's what this is. This is just a load screen. So you'd come through here and you'd load it up. And then boom, we are here in the cave entrance to the town of Orchard Vale. So you come on through. This is a relatively complete area, actually. Tons of raiders came in here. Um, pathway isn't necessarily complete and cave's not complete, but the overall idea is there. Um, the whole purpose of this is like, it's an abandoned town. So there's not villagers, there's not anything, no shops or anything. Um, the whole concept is I wanted to make a build that was like, interesting for me to be running when I'm running around to explore and so um, that it's something that's like I I would be running through here all the time because I would be using the Colas gate and then I could be running back to the gypsy camp area and so something I think I, I the reason why this didn't necessarily work well I love the build area I love this build style we I definitely want to do this build style again in a more like not run down fashion um, but I think the reason why it didn't work out was because I had no reason to explore this area. Like we didn't have any sort of storage system that was centralized and like required us to go back or anything. And that's something I want to address in season two. I think I want to make a end all be all storage system for our world that requires us to explore back to get stuff. And I think while a, that might be a bit of a pain to deal with sometimes, I think it'll be good or doing stuff like this to where we get to explore our builds more and visit. And it's like, we don't like, it's not like a, you build the gypsy camp and then you leave and you never come back. And I think that would be a nice thing to like, just come back and do builds like that. So the only uh, build here that actually has a person in it is this, this is the inn. Uh, actually a really cool build. I really love kind of the style with the composters and stuff. Um, it's a little bit bigger. And so you've got a little bit of a ruffian in here. And so the whole goal of it was that, there was like this eye patch dude and he's like the bartender or whatever. And it's just supposed to be like, if you're in the area, you can have at least a bed that's moderately safe. Um, and so this is just like a little bit of an in kind of interesting. I like the, the style of it all. You can kind of see a map here and I think overall looks pretty cool. But the whole lore behind this area is that it was abandoned due to sac uh, like a the whole town was essentially sacrificed. It's kind of the the end concept of it. Um, it's based off of Orchard, not Orchard Vale. That's this area. It's based off of Oak Vale from Fable Two. Um, the build style is based off of Oak Field, I believe, um, in Fable Two as well. Um, but the whole concept of it in Oakvale was like, it was sacrificed by the, some shadow dude or something. And we were going to, I was going to do some underground build here as well to like incorporate more of that, but eh, that was okay. This is the Colas gate for any of you who are curious what a Colas gate may look like. This one's a little beaten up and run down, but the general concept is there. I'll show you how to use that, uh, probably next episode of the world tour. This is the Colas gate for any of you who are curious what it may look like. We have, I have better, fuller versions of it. So this, uh, the whole reason it's called Orchard Vale is because of this. This is the apple orchard that was, uh, it's now the, like the swamp has taken over and stuff. And so, um, it's, it's kind of, you know, swampy, but the whole goal was like the emeralds were supposed to be like green apples and stuff. And they used to be red apples, but they were kind of turned poison due to the whole nature of the area being corrupted and kind of taken over. And then this is, this is a really cool build. I really, really love this. So this is like a broken off windmill. So this used to be a big old windmill area that stuck up, but then it snapped in half due to like erosion or something. And then fell down and just kind of like slunk there. And so it's a, I think it's a really cool build. We've got just like a whole dilapidated thing. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this um, because you can just like view it and it's kind of cool. And then if you come on up here, this is the temple of the area, the temple to Os. This area also was a human settlement. So there is a temple of Os here all overgrown. It was experimenting more with diorite and how to use that and make it interesting. This is very much inspired by the Temple of Light in Fable 2 as well. Um, and so, yeah, this, I mean, this whole, this whole town in particular is like fully Fable 2 inspired. Um, and so I, I really love this build. I think it looks really cool. And I really just love this whole area. I think it looks, it's just such a cool little area to be in. So that is the 
town of Orchard Vale. It is uh, very, I really love the style of it. I think there's some really cool builds here. To view, there's some lore and stuff around it and some cool little like interesting tidbits in each of the buildings. Each one is a little bit more unique and different. Some have interiors, some don't. Um, but I think it's a really cool concept. There's even a graveyard we didn't even check out. Um, I'm really happy with how this area turned out. I think it's a really cool build. But that is going to have to do it for this particular episode. Next episode, we will be checking out the other towns like the Steampunk City and all that. Um, but in checking out the teleportation system as well, because I think that is important to explain, but I'll be explaining that next episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know how you are enjoying the world tour videos. Uh, and if you did enjoy, leave a like. If you're new here, feel free, subscribe, join, and you'll get to see more builds like this in the season two world. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Uh,